eating up some innings and getting some outs. Facing Brandon Butterworth to start, and he starts low. Keep an eye on the curveball tonight for Gongora. When that's rolling, it's his best pitch. And the sport management major, Brandon Butterworth, and has a 1 0 count. Make it 2 0. With Linus Baker calling the balls and strikes tonight, John Byrne at first, Darren Spugnardi at second, and Robert Nunez at third. There's a strike. Yeah, you mentioned the curveball for Gongora, Jack. That is his best pitch, and when it is on, he is a very effective pitcher, but does complement it with a couple of different fastballs, including a cutter. This has popped up right side. Should be easy work for Dylan Hoy. And it is. One gone. Well, right on cue, Dylan Hoy with the first out of the game, and he has been all year long. He's been an elite defender, the transfer, coming in here to the Louisville program. Alex Alisea held down the fort while he was out for about a month with a hamstring injury, but you could feel the energy. His presence in the lineup when he came back from that really gave the team a boost. Yeah, certainly did. He's been terrific at the plate as well, not just in the field, Dylan Hoy. A great leader in the locker room, a great presence to have every which way. And with Gongora on the mound, he's really got to be feeling good to have Hoy behind him in the field. Gongora feeling good up one and two here. But Garrett Pennington has been ultra dangerous along with Makarevich. Uh, Penn Pennington leading the team in batting average, top 20 in the ACC at 377. And stays alive. It's interesting to see how guys will react in their first season in the ACC when you get to conference games. And Pennington being a Wichita State transfer, he's gotten better in ACC games, batting 380. And he strikes out here. Strong start for Gongora with two retired. Yeah, after throwing a couple of early balls, falling behind in the first at bat against Butterworth. Good battle back from Gongora, and like we were alluding in the opening, looks very comfortable at home. That pitch low in the zone, and Pennington pulled the trigger in a two-strike count and couldn't find it. So here is Makarevich, and just low, according to Linus Baker. Makarevich, another transfer. This is a lineup that is pretty new based on last year. Only two regular starters back in Jacob Cozart and Eli Serrano. And Makarevich coming over from East Carolina, who just beat NC State 12-4 on Tuesday. One and two, and Gongora one strike away from a 1-2-3 inning. And it'll be interesting to see here, Jack, if he does go to that curveball. Hasn't been a frequent fixture so far, 12 pitches in. Working fast. It's a fastball, and it's fouled out of play. Like we talked about, it's such a weapon when that curveball is on. But so far in this inning, Gongora, not to my mind anyway, I haven't spotted one just yet, has not used the curveball. I don't believe so either. There it was, and it's pop foul. It can freeze hitters at times, especially guys from that left side. Absolutely can. When it is on, it has an intense break. One, two. Makarevich has been a picture of consistency over his last two plus seasons going back to East Carolina. Started the last 159 games. And he's putting together a nice at bat here. And the kind of at bat that NC State needed. You mentioned Gongoro working quickly today. Was making quick work of the Wolfpack lineup through two outs. But this has been a bigger effort. Got him swinging. Couple of strikeouts to end the first for Gongoro. Looking very comfortable at home. Over three and a third innings, but just six and two thirds total for him all year long. So again, not expected to go very deep. 
And not a good start either as he plunks JT Benson with the very first pitch that he threw today. Yeah, not a strong start at all. JT Benson has been hit by more pitches than anybody in the Louisville lineup this year. And Elliot Avent already out to talk with Linus Baker. There'll be a conversation about whether or not Benson did enough to get out of the way of this pitch. Certainly he didn't dive out of the way, JT Benson. We've seen more exaggerated pushes into the ball. It seemed like Benson just stopped dead in his tracks. Yeah. At least that's the way Linus Baker saw it. And Benson on first after just one pitch. Brings up Dylan Hoy. And a throw back to the mound that leaks behind no danger there for NC State with Benson planted on first and Andrews here Jackie's got to find that confidence a little bit hits the first batter and drops that ball youngster on the road in a difficult spot yeah they're going to see what this freshman is made of tonight now not expected to go very deep but still starting the game is a big responsibility and Dylan Hoy, opposite end of the spectrum. Fifth year senior coming over from Marist. He's a true freshman that the coaching staff has high hopes for. He's battled some injury coming into his college career in the fall. Fastball slider changeup, and the fastball has some sinking movement on it. That is a shot. Just foul down the line. Just barely foul. That Louisville dugout was ready to erupt. Instead, it's two and two. Election if he chooses to come out. And he'll be a key part today, Jack, of managing that Louisville running game, which is so elite. If Louisville can get guys on base, it'll be up to Cozart to limit the damage in many instances and he's already being tested here against Benson who has 17 steals which is second in the ACC make it 15 for Benson this year Benson running and it's out a hit by pitch in a walk to start for Andrews. And on a bullpen day, it's going to be interesting to see how long the leash is for Andrews in the first. Andrews, a guy that has coming into the game a five strikeout, five walk ratio, even. Hadn't hit a batter yet this year. That's changed seven pitches into today. And it's an NC State pitching staff that at their best has been middle of the pack has struggled at times though the bullpen was thought to be a strength coming into the year it's been the offense that's led them to a strong record in ACC play and it's been a lot of close wins a lot of gutty wins that they've been able to pull out despite some pitching that hasn't been the most successful a couple of walk-off wins to close out the Notre Dame sweep this past weekend Numbers won't jump out, but they have a knack for winning close games. As Rose lays the bunt down foul. Good teams win close games. And you're going to be in a lot of them in ACC play. Absolutely. But this team not very tested on the road. Just their seventh road game tonight. 16-4 and four at home. 2-4 and four on the road and got swept by Georgia Tech. Big moment for Rose here. First and second, nobody out. And this is bunted. Fair. Rose hustling down the line, and he's easily safe. So the only hit to load the bases for Louisville's a bunt single. Still nobody out.
Zion Rose hitting in the three hole for the first time in his Louisville career and with a couple of runners on you might have thought that the three hole hitter would have been swinging away to try and drive somebody home. But in this Louisville offense on this Louisville team everyone is expected to have command of the fundamentals and that was on display there a perfect bunt from Zion Rose who has got plenty of speed to beat it out for a single. Now it's up to Keelan. We highlighted him from the start in the cleanup position. This has popped up left side. Going to be a tough play, but the play is made. Makarevich back from third and a key out there. Double play could get Andrews and NC State out of the inning. Yeah, huge out and against a huge hitter for Louisville as it has turned out this year. Now it's to Eddie King, who has really elevated recently. Six for 16 in ACC games, batting very well. Takes a rip of the first pitch slider and missed it. Started the year one for 10. It was a slow start for King, but 367 since that one for 10 start. Benson Hoy rose on. Oh, and two. Had a clutch game tying single to right field in a midweek game against Lipscomb in the ninth. King trying to come up clutch again. Ground ball right side. And it's off the glove into right. Hoy got the windmill. He will score easily as Rose is to third. And the bouncing ball gets it done. 2 0 cards. Louisville returning home in search of a first ACC series victory this weekend. And this has been about the best start they could have hoped to a Friday night game. Bouncing ball on the turf, really difficult for Luke Nixon to get there at second base. Did really well just to get his glove to it, honestly. And unfortunately for him, he couldn't keep it in the infield. Easy steal there for Eddie King into scoring position. Again, Louisville second in the ACC in steals. They're up there almost every year. But King has really come on strong, and that's where he dipped last year as a freshman. RBI numbers were decent in ACC play, but the batting average plummeted. That has not been the case so far. And it's been a different year for Eddie King in terms of the way it played out last year. Burst on the scene is that freshman, albeit his second year in the program, but a freshman on the playing field. And he looked the part of a star for the first couple of months. But as you said, Jack fell off in conference play. This year has had to battle for his playing time a little bit more. A lot more options in the outfield for Dan McDonald. And with the slower start that he had, he found himself on the outside looking in a little bit, but has earned his way back. And is a key batter right now for this Cardinals offense. Klein takes high. It's three and one. Yeah, King talked about having a grittier mindset coming into the season. And he's had to show that early on, not getting the playing time that he expected as a regular. Might be moving into that role permanently with the way he's been batting. Second and third, three and one. And Klein sends it foul. Klein has struggled a bit in ACC games, just 136, but had a solo homer in their only home series in conference play against Virginia Tech. And Jeff, in typical Dan McDonald fashion, with the rotation for positional players, Matt Klein's played quite a bit of first base as well. They need him at the plate here. Just outside. 
Slider barely missed from Andrews, and the base is loaded once again. Yeah, if you're going to be a catcher on this team, you've got to have some versatility. Look at Klein, look at Zion Rose, technically. He's become more of an outfielder than a catcher, and a designated hitter as well. But for NC State, young Heath Andrews might be reaching his limit. He threw 51 pitches earlier this year against Duke. But outside of that, is not gotten past the 25 mark in terms of pitch count. And the way this inning is going, Louisville will want to pounce early. And NC State, you mentioned earlier, they're really hoping for a ground ball right now to get out of the, this inning and keep themselves in the game. A massive swing moment, and Elliot Avent and this Wolfpack coaching staff pouring over the options on what's expected to be a bullpen day. Humphrey, chopper up the middle, could be two. Isaac hustling down the line and just beat it out. That is huge to pick up another run for Louisville and keep the inning alive. You talked about it, Jack, a little sliding doors moment in the game. This ball is hit a little bit more powerfully. And if the turn in the middle infield from Luke Nixon and the transfer of the toss from Luke Nixon is a little bit cleaner, that might be a double play and the inning might be over. Instead, we continue on, and Louisville still with a big chance to put up a big number. Not that three isn't enough, but a bigger number in this first inning. Yeah, they're looking for all the cushion they can get as NC State has had the knack for coming back in games. And Louisville did lead in all three games at Florida State despite winning just one. Snap their downs way late. This is about the perfect start that he could have hoped for in this series, don't you think, Jack? Three runs against a bullpen day for Wake, uh, beg your pardon, for NC State. And talking to him before the game, Jeff, he said, yeah, we survived on the road. Now it's time to thrive. This is it. I mean, you've got three or four series at home this month. It's go time now, and it starts here. Exactly the start that Dan McDonald was looking for. McCoy watches ball, too. And specifically this game to set the tone for the series. With Whitaker under the weather, and this being the bullpen day for NC State, Louisville sees this as the opportunity to take control. Yeah, that's the word, opportunity. It is a clear opportunity to get out on the right foot and set the tone for the series. You're still going to see some really talented pitchers for NC State tomorrow and Sunday. So if there were a chance to jump on them a little bit, this is it. But you got to take that chance, and so far Louisville has. And Gongora on the other side looks like he's got some of his best stuff today. Just about the perfect start Louisville could have wanted on a Friday night. Hitters count for McCoy. Six homers this year. And it's a softball to shortstop. Butterworth, force out to end the inning. But Louisville scores three, some small ball. And again, a guy that if he decides to try and ply his trade professionally after this season, he'll be one of the first catchers picked. He's been the best strike stealer behind the plate in college baseball the last two years. He does everything well. This is grounded to first, and McCoy for the first out. With the hitting coming along for Cozart and the power as well. I mean, that's going to get scouts really excited. Yeah, the strikes stealing, as you put it. That's the sign of a talented catcher. A guy that can frame pitches really well. First four retired by Gongora. And the first ball to Josh Haig. Hoag is outside. Been 
tough start for NC State at the plate. Again, they've been really good in late innings, but trying to figure out Gongora here. This is a pop-up left side. Out of the shift, Keelan. Efficient from Gongora so far today. Just that one at bat. That was a lengthy one. Makarevich, I believe, had that longer at bat to close out the first inning. Everything else has been within four or five pitches that he's gotten an out. Looks in total control right now. Now, Gongora has been a little bit unfortunate, which is why some of his numbers can look a little bit inflated, too. Six unearned runs scored against him. That's the most on the team. And he's also pitched in some really bad conditions at times this year. This is Eli Serrano at the plate, and it's 3-0. and It's part of the reason why I say I'm sure he's happy to be coming home. Won three of his four starts here, the last three starts he's had here against Youngstown State, Northwestern, and Virginia Tech. Back in the ACC opener for Louisville. And then you throw in the St. Bonaventure game where he cruised until the last couple of innings. Yep. Ended up being a funky loss. Bringing two. So really, every time he's taken the mound at Jim Patterson Stadium, he's been good. And he's gone at least 89 pitches in all seven outings. As this is driven into the gap in left field, Benson racing over from left. It's in center for Rose, though, as his hat came flying off. The freshman catcher playing in center. It's not been the offensive performance where they're hitting the ball all over the yard, but they've done enough, and they've been aggressive on the base paths when they've had their opportunities. And again, on a bullpen day for NC State. Louisville felt like they needed to come out strong in this one, and they have. Logan Beard at the bottom of the order today. Second straight season as a captain for Logan. And his fifth start in the last six games with Brandon Anderson out of the lineup right now with a back injury. Beard hammers this. Left center field gap, and it's gone. His third homer in the last four games. And the captain's picking up steam just at the right time. for Logan Beard that batting average might not be where he wanted it to be 240 coming into the game today but when he catches one man does it look sweet and he caught that one another home run the sixth of the year in total Louisville already into the NC State bullpen expected to be a bullpen day but no outs here in the second Logan Beard leading off with a home run out to left center and it's 4-0 Louisville with Connor Consiglio now on the mound. Consiglio, another freshman like you mentioned, Jack. Lefty out of the state of Florida. He's thrown eight innings over the course of this season. Last time out for him was decent. Gave up a couple of walks against East Carolina, but didn't allow a run, earned or otherwise. And then on the heels of his outing before that, over nearly a month prior against UNCG where he was shelled. Gave up seven earned runs on seven hits. And back-to-back -back freshman for NC State to hit JT Benson. And this does not look good based on his reaction. Patrick Forbes out with injury right now after getting hit in the hand on the road. Let's just hope Benson's okay. Let's see. He got the pad. 
So that's good. Might have just still gotten some of the funny bone, for lack of a technical phrase. It's one that can hurt. And it's chilly out there, too. Yeah. Benson, even with a bit of a cold streak, so valuable for this team. And they're going to keep him in the game. Yeah, valuable, Jack, because he gets on base. Coming into the game, that 458 on base percentage. So valuable. Doesn't matter how you get on. He's a guy that's gotten hit quite a bit this year. But just valuable to have base runners. And Benson's taken off. Ball on the turf, and Cozart made it close, but Benson's safe. Louisville continuing to take extra bases. And that's part of why being on base is so valuable for Louisville, particularly because it's JT Benson. One of the steals leaders on this team. And with the ball in the dirt, no hesitation, even after being a little bit shaken up on the last play, he takes off. And it was a little bit closer than it looked. I tell you what, Jeff, that was really close. But we move on. NC State, with Cozart specifically behind the plate, has done really well at limiting the running game, but it's strength on strength here. And Benson's taken off for third base, got such a great jump that Cozart had no chance. Well, you got a lefty freshman on the mound, and you're on second base. As a veteran, JT Benson, just see the motion, and he knew it right away. That little jump into the lead, and he took off as soon as his toes hit the ground. And a walk. It's exactly how the first inning started for Louisville. And the small ball was how they got their first few runs. That's carried over here to the third. Yeah, in that first inning, just two base hits for Louisville, and neither of them, well, one of them got to the outfield, but is off of the glove of the second baseman. This one from Eddie King. A butt base hit for Zion Rose, and then that one for King to drive in a couple of runs. And Louisville did a lot without really hitting the ball all that well at the plate in terms of making contact. That was until Logan Beard came to the plate. And Louisville's offense just searching for something here because you see the ACC numbers. Last in the league in batting average in conference games, but you look at the season totals, they're really good. And some of those numbers inflated due to the competition. They played at home. They won 12 of 13. Things were great. But when you face some of the best comp uh, competition in the country on a week-in, week-out basis, it's going to get much tougher. And some of those offensive numbers that have been poor in ACC play, you also have to remember that Louisville is one of the, the couple of teams that haven't played every weekend of ACC baseball since the season started they had a, a bye week in week one so some of the totals are a little bit lower than other teams but what will frustrate Louisville is that batting average is last in the league on base percentage last in the league slugging percentage near the bottom as well now there was an interesting situation that just happened there Rose thought he was hit started to jog down to first Hoy got caught in between first and second Cozart was about to chase him down, but he didn't want to make a throw and allow Benson to come home to score. Yeah, sorry, Jack. I just looked down after seeing Rose starting to make his way down the first baseline. The play was certainly not over. Looked like it might have just caught him. Good thing for Rose because he crushes this into the right center gap. It's going to drive home two, and Rose is booking it to third. The throw gets away, and here comes Rose. Bounce perfect for NC State. Consiglio on the backup, nearly a little league home run, but he drives home two with the two RBI triple. Whoa. 
Bo is right. First time at the plate, Zion Rose had to lay down a bunt, got a single out of it. This time, that's more like a three-hole hitter right there. Smashes it into the right field gap, and you love the aggression Louisville does. But maybe, just maybe, he should have been a little bit more cautious, thought about it for a half second on that ball that went to the dugout because he was out by several feet. That gives NC State the first out, now the second, as Keelan pops out to Makarevich for the second time. That's just the way Rose plays, though. Yeah, I think there's give and take it. with it. Absolutely, you'll take that because of what he's able to give you. That playing with your hair on fire mentality that we talked about a bunch this year, you and I, Jack. On display there. Eddie King got this thing rolling in the first with his two RBI single, but again, I think he got the stop sign when he was rounding second, and he still went to third. And I'm sure he got the stop sign as he was about to head home, but <laughs> went anyway. I think he was up and moving before the sign could even be uh, yes. be handed out there. Rose wasn't waiting on a sign. He had Louie doing push-ups after his two RBI triple. King fouls it off. There's going to be some meaty cardinal wings by the end of this one, potentially. Meaty. You know, muscly. Yeah. One two pitch and Consiglio strikes out King shadowed what Sebastian Gongora has done on the mound, which has been fantastic. Yeah, fantastic today. Been moving quickly and fantastic at times this year, particularly at home like we've talked about. And it's interesting to see some of those numbers right there. We talk about that curveball being such a big weapon for him, but it's not about how often he uses it, it's about who he uses it against. Righty, lefty, time in the at bat in terms of the count. It's one of his favorite two strike pitches. But that fastball that he uses 60% of the time has been one of his biggest weapons today. Has not gone to the curveball a ton. It's been the fastball that's done a lot of work for him. Nick, yeah, going right with those numbers that you saw. Great graphic from our crew as Bechtel takes. Just based on what we've seen from him this year, you would expect that curveball number to be higher than 18%. Got him swinging. And Klein completes it. Yeah, like you said, Jack, it's been such a weapon for him, that curveball. But it's not a pitch that he's going to Hit you with two or three straight times. He's very selective when he does use it. It's just been with great effectiveness when he does use it. But today it's been the other pitches in his arsenal, the fastball, the cutter, that have made the biggest differences. And it looks like, I believe that was the cutter. The previous pitch might have been a slider, which he's used 12% of the time. The curveball just a little bit more flashy as Chase Nixon steps to the plate. And Nixon rips this down the line. Foul. Came close to NC State's first hit. Just way out in front there, Nixon. If he could have held back for another split second, that would have been right down the line into the corner. And extra have, bases. And Jeff, sorry to cut you off there. It would have been his first extra base hit of the season. He's got 11 hits. This is his eighth start and zero extra base hits. Takes a fastball right down the middle. Nixon started on Tuesday against East Carolina. Again, a 12-4 loss for NC State. To the 12th ranked team in the country. And Nixon went 0 for 3 with a hit by pitch. Wow, he looked silly on that off-speed pitch from Gongora. On 
honestly, it's a similar sl swing to the one that he hit foul earlier in the at bat into right field, where he was way out in front. This time just didn't make the contact, and yeah, it's an awkward one, an ugly one to send Nixon to the dugout. And Gongora dealing on a Friday night back at home. Just misses the corner to Luke Nixon, Chase's younger brother. But four strikeouts through eight batters for Gongora now. Popped up. Gongora off the mound. McCoy over from first and tracks it in. A little bit scary looking up at the head of Klein. And it brings up Humphrey, who is on a five game hit streak. As the freshman pitchers in Andrews and Consiglio continue to struggle. There's a strike to Humphrey. We talked about the emergence of Eddie King recently. It's been a slow rise for Isaac. Who's really batting well now. Yeah, I was just thinking about that comparison between Humphrey and King, considering both guys were disappointing to finish last year, but both guys also starting to turn it on this year at a key time. Batted 250 through his first 10 games, 380 since then. And Isaac Humphrey back to the form that NC State last saw him in in this stadium two years ago when he was outstanding. Takes the walk. Also the third straight inning that the hit batsman has been followed by a walk. Yeah, far too many free passes one way or the other from NC State pitching. For this Louisville offense that has shown glimpses of some big time talent over the course of the year. Despite some struggles in ACC play. McCoy bunts it, pops it up, and it's caught. Nicely by Makarevich, and runners trying to advance with nobody home, and Makarevich got there in time. It was an aggressive play from Klein, ends up in a double play. Makarevich holding his lip, may have gotten shaken up. Yeah, an awkward collision. Makarevich maybe initially just in his gut thought it was a force play the way that he was running for the bag and then realized that he needed to apply a tag. And those two just coming together a bit forcefully, I'll say. And Makarevich taking it in the face. So clearly he'll be checked on here, but Great hustle play from him. Klein, a capable runner, but certainly not Louisville's fastest runner. First of all, the bunt. McCoy will be disappointed with that to pop it up in that spot. But look at the play from Makarevich to slide in. And then just see the way he slid into the bag there. It looked like he was in his gut maybe thinking it was a force play, but then got there and realized, oh, I have to apply a tag here. And that just led to that awkward collision. But he looks like he's going to be okay. Looks like Klein's hand came up swiping late, and it caught Makarevich in the face. But what a turn there. First and second, nobody out. And instead of moving the runners, just a man on first, two outs now. Even something as small as that might be a momentum builder for NC State, who's looking for anything at this point. Beard gave the cards momentum to start last inning with his solo home run. And again, if you're Louisville, you'll probably live with it, even with Matt Klein on that play, because you want your team playing aggressively on the base pads. There was an open bag at third. Klein saw the opportunity, just wasn't quite able to get it done. This is what Logan Beard did against Andrews. Hit on a line, not very high, but plenty of distance. And you just felt it off the bat that it was traveling. 
Got a good rip on that, but fouled it off. And with Beard at the plate, seemingly swinging a hot bat with those home runs over the last couple of games. Louisville will be a little bit frustrated that they did run themselves into an out there. Crab ball to short, and Butterworth ends the inning. Look promising for Louisville to start, still 6 0. Five ACC teams projected to be in that top 16 as a regional host, and three in the top eight. NC State ranked 19th right now, projected in the field, along with Wake Forest, Virginia Tech, and Miami. But with the ACC being so good, the opportunities there every week to cash in with a resume builder. Yeah, that's the optimistic way to look at it for sure. And that's the way this Louisville team has to look at it, that especially at home here, they have an opportunity to bolster that resume because, again, the, the non-conference was not particularly challenging, so the RPI number not very high for Louisville. And obviously with the struggles that they've had in conference play, they'll be looking to rack up signature wins over the next month and a half leading into that postseason. One, two to Brandon Butterworth at the top. And he stays alive. Nine up, nine down for Gongora so far. And he's gotten run support. Three runs for Louisville in each of the first two innings. Second home start in ACC play for Gongora. And he gave up just two earned through six and a third against Virginia Tech back in mid-March. Talking about Virginia Tech in that picture, they have come out just firing 10 and 2. Wave and a miss. That's the fifth punch out already. Fifth punch out today matches the total from those difficult starts at Wake Forest and at Florida State for Gongora. Three games prior to that against Youngstown State, Northwestern, and Virginia Tech, all at home, all wins from him. He had 25 combined Ks. So he's got his best strikeout stuff here at Jim Patterson Stadium as well, it seems. Had Pennington off balance. And these are the moments that Gongora just couldn't wait for. Coming over from Wright State. Racking up the strikeouts against a ranked ACC team. 0-2. And he spoke about his process in the transfer portal on the third and central podcast and what it was like as he was making his decision and what ultimately landed him on Louisville. This is fouled off. Gangora said he was bombarded by calls for two weeks and DMs. But he spoke with Roger Williams over the phone for an hour. And that conversation really convinced him. Coach Williams seemed like a guy that understood Sebastian's situation. So there's another foul ball. Then he gets on campus. Fall confirms that he loved Coach Williams, Coach McDonald. And it's only gone up from there as he's earned his role as the Friday starter. One, two. Jeff, the challenge for Gongora will be consistently facing guys like Pennington multiple times, who's putting together a good at bat here. The level of hitter in the ACC is just a little bit different. And when they see you multiple times, Jeff, it really starts to get more challenging. So we'll see how he reacts ahead against Pennington for the second time. This is smacked, center field, pushing Rose back to the wall, and it's gone. Second time through, and Pennington sends it out against Gongora. The first hit of the game for NC State. Yeah, Jack, you were speaking about it. Multiple times through the order, how do offenses adjust 
when they're struggling like NC State has been struggling against Gongora today. And Pennington just stayed with it. Pitch that was low in the zone and is able to lift it with the train rolling by to nearly the deepest part of the yard. His first season in the ACC, that's his eighth home run of the year and his sixth homer in ACC games. And Pennington coming off a pretty good day this past weekend in game three against Notre Dame with a walk-off three-run homer. Makarevic had no idea on that pitch. One and two. That was one of the filthier pitches we've seen today. From Gon Goran, we've seen a few of them. Got him swinging. Nice bounce back for Gongora, who's up to six strikeouts. And Gongora frustrated with that home run still, even after coming back with that strikeout. That's because he knows he's got his good stuff today. He knows he's pitching well. Frustrated that he gave one up. Comes back with that high and away fastball after the off-speed pitch at 79. Makarevich looks silly just a moment before. Yeah, you can still see he's frustrated with that last one for sure. But when you talk to coaches around this league and just in baseball, they all say the same thing. Solo home runs will not beat you. Especially when you've gotten the run support that Gongora has gotten today. Can really attack the strike zone, which he's done. One and one on Cozart. The only man to reach so far for NC State was Pennington on his home run. Pops foul territory, and Klein watches it cascade into the stands. He's happy. Again, we'll never get the chance with the net behind home. <laughs> no, I don't think that's ever going to change. But don't let that stop you from continuing to bring your glove to the game every night, Jack. Got it in my backpack. Never know. I actually do know, and I don't have my glove. <laughs> it's in the closet somewhere. One, two. Swing and a miss. The filth is out for Gongora. You get one back from the home run, but it's not enough right now, and with this bullpen day continuing, you just figure that Louisville might continue to pile on some runs. It's been a rough stretch for Louisville, going back to this time last year, which was their last ACC series win with a sweep against Boston College. It was assumed that they would win every series they played from 15 to 22. A couple of trips to Omaha. I think it three trips to Omaha during that time. And since then, just the last couple of years, you throw in 2021 as well with a, a sputtering end to that season. It's been a different story. It has not been the same Louisville program in terms of results the last couple of years to what they were able to put up their first several in the ACC and then on before that in the American and the Big East. Benson with a fly to right. Hogue has it. And I think that speaks to the increased competition level in depth in the ACC and all around college baseball as well. Yeah, there's just so much more talent in college baseball, college athletics generally. Now, since the pandemic, with the extra rules, with the transfer portal opening up, now with NIL, throw that in, too. Keeping players around a little bit longer. There's a lot of talent, and like you said, Jack, it's just made it so much more competitive. Not that it wasn't competitive before. But the challenges are different. 
And Louisville's adjusting to that. They dipped into the transfer portal for the first time this past year, bringing in guys like Dylan Hoy, Luke Napleton as well, Sebastian Gongora. And then you throw in the NIL. Dan McDonald said in his opening press conference this year that maybe he should have been wearing a 502 circle hat or something like that. It's a brave new world in a, in a lot of ways. And every program has had to adjust. Louisville has thrived on development, though, getting the freshmen in, getting their hands on them, and, and molding their development over three years, and hopefully sending them off to the draft. Slow chopper right side. Scoop cleanly, and Consiglio got there just in time. Jeff, it feels like this game might be starting to shift a little bit. It was a tad out of control the first couple of innings, but Consiglio has settled it down. It's going to be a heavy fastball cutter to righties, and he's facing one now in Zion Rose, who is red hot at the plate. Blooper, right field, and it's down. Rose continues to hit. He's three for three tonight. Maybe a bad guy to see if you're a forestry major, a guy who plays with his hair on fire. Jeez. Trying to keep the fire going, Zion Rose. Forest fires are not good ever. Gavin Keelan. Two pop-outs to Makarevich at third. And Rose had a two RBI triple his last time up. Ball got by third base. Thought he had enough time to race home, but he did not with Consiglio backing up. Keelan drives it into right center field, but not a ton of carry. And that'll do it for the fourth as Serrano makes the catch. Life of a forestry major at NC State looks like. If we're talking about Hollis Fanning and the fact that he's a forestry major, the new pitcher for NC State, what did you major in? Uh, communication, obviously, to be here with you. So you wouldn't go back and change to being a forestry major? I probably would not. But in full honesty, I wasn't aware that it was an option when I was in college. I'm in the same boat as you are. 0-2 here. Wave and a miss. That's eight strikeouts for Gongora. What type of tree is that, Jeff? Ah, well, it strikes me as a pine tree, but I'm no forest expert. Looks like a pine tree. What about that one, Jack? Zero clue. <laughs> it's a tree with leaves. <laughs> that are just starting to come out as we hit springtime. This is laced into the gap in left center. Not laced, it was blooped in there actually. As Rose stops it. And nonchalantly on the pickup, ends up in an extra base for Serrano. Well, like a deciduous tree leaf, this ball fell into the outfield, and Serrano, seeing that it fell, a little bit delayed around first, but eventually turned on the speed to get to second base. And after that home run for NC State, they've got their second hit of the day as some rain starts to come down and maybe provide some mid-inning snacks to the trees out there in the outfield. The trees will like it. I think fans liked your deciduous reference. I haven't heard that since like fifth grade. Yes. <laughs> Back to Yeah, this rain came on in a hurry here. It's relatively light, but combined with the wind, Sebastian Gongora pitched in some tough conditions this year. Has to be like, are you kidding me? NC State will take anything because outside of the solo homer, Gongora has just steamrolled. 
He's been like a buzzsaw. Also, it's Alex Sosa at the DH spot now in place of Bechtel. Sosa's been uh, a regular in the lineup, very talented freshman. NC State feels like this might be the time where they can change the game. They had an 8-3 comeback against Duke in the ninth inning at home earlier this year. Very comfortable playing from behind. But Sosa goes down swinging, and it's up to nine for Gongora through four and two-thirds. Nine strikeouts on 69 pitches. Talk about efficiency. And right now, there's no reason to not keep riding Gongora further and further into this game the way he's throwing the ball. Had everything working today just about. And it's not like this was set up to be a big strikeout day for him either. NC State generally very good about not striking out. The fewest per game in the ACC. I think it has more to do with Gongora being on today than it does with anything else. It's like in basketball, they say a good shot beats good defense. Well, on the day, good pitching might beat a strong offensive team strong in terms of not striking out very often as you pointed out Jack they're taking defensive swings right now that's for sure Nixon struck out in the third Gongora has been money today, trying to add a 10th K to that line right there. And close out the fifth. Two-two. And he held. Serrano holds as well at second. A sneaky big pitch right here as NC State tries to claw back into the game. Yeah, they've had seldom few opportunities to have runners on base, period. You got one in scoring position right now. 3-2 is strike three. Gongora's been outrageous tonight. Then the school dropped sports. So he had a walk-on offer from Wright State. Previously, he needed to check back on that if they still wanted him. He was left without a school momentarily. Eddie King leading off the inning here for Louisville. So he checked back with Wright State, sent the coach a text. They told him he could walk on, but he had to redshirt. King with a ground ball through the left side. Everybody clap your hands. Gongora puts on 35 pounds at Wright State. He develops and then ultimately transfers here to Louisville after three years. And you want to talk about different stories, different backgrounds. That last strike out against Chase Nixon, the son of a major leaguer. Gongora has waited a long time for this moment, like you talked about, Jack. In the ACC against a ranked opponent. Making the most of it today. He's gotten some help from his offense. Six runs to the first two, but scoreless the last two and trying to start a rally again against Fanning. A reminder, it's a bullpen day for NC State. Logan Whitaker under the weather, and Heath Andrews getting the start. King going, Cozart throwing, and King's out. The ball was dropped. They're saying on the transfer, Darren Spugnardi says on the transfer, 
Eddie King's going to hang there for just a moment. Let's see. Throws just a little bit offline there from Cozart. And I don't know, Jack. I'm not so sure that Eddie King shouldn't be safe. Dan McDonald was immediately at stolen base. And Klein up. And Klein driving. To right. Hogue back and makes the catch, which will lead to the King tag. But a sacrifice situation coming for Louisville with just one out. You're saying at this point in the season, every little thing matters, every little call matters. Well, even in a five-run game, every little run matters for Louisville right now. So with the runner at second base, Klein does his job, hits it well enough into the outfield to advance King to third. And with one out now, there's plenty of opportunity to drive him home one way or the other. And the question right now will be, against which NC State pitcher. This is the pitching coach, Clint Chrysler. Doesn't look like a pitching change. Although the activity continues. Well, it is a pitching change. Wynn Scott comes in when NC State's losing. It's a heck of a baseball name. He takes them out next. Pleasant spring night. A little bit chilly. Not too bad here in Louisville. Six to one. Cards over NC State. Yeah, pleasant if you're a, a Louisville fan for sure. Not so pleasant for the Wolfpack faithful. Still calls for the beanies with the temperature. Win Scott on the mound. Scott, a sophomore, I beg your pardon, a junior, who last year as a sophomore pitched in the NCAA tournament against Campbell, had an inning and a third scoreless with a strikeout in the postseason. This year, just now four appearances, two of them since conference play began against Duke, where he gave up a pair of runs, and then most recently against East Carolina in the midweek, where he gave up four against the Pirates in two-thirds of an inning of work. So a guy looking to find his rhythm in 2024. And a difficult spot to inherit here with a runner at third and one out. Infield in with Humphrey at the plate and King at third. Yeah. NC State's re -sees some of the momentum. Two scoreless innings in a row for the cards at the plate. And NC State got its first run of the fourth. High and tight, and it's 2-0. Oh. It's got a guy that will use a lot of sliders, particularly, particularly against left-handed hitters. There it is again, and it's a strike. Two and two. Humphrey grounded into a 4-6 fielder's choice in the first and walked in the third. Trying to extend his five-game hitting streak here. Louisville would also take a sacrifice. But he goes down swinging. That's a big one for Wynn Scott. Fifth strikeout on the season. He had three against Duke in ACC play. After a bunch of sliders, he goes to that fastball low in the zone. Not a fastball that's going to blow by you with velocity, but when he can mix it well with the off-speed, the slider, he can be effective. And this will be a test for Ryan McCoy. Who's known for hitting fastballs. Takes the slider for a strike. Tried to lay down a bunt with first and second. Nobody out. 
in the third and popped it up to Makarevich at third base and it ended up in a double play as Klein tried to advance. McCoy just gets under it into center. And Serrano ends the inning. NC State hanging around as we go to the sixth. Us. Nine teams projected in the field, including NC State. 19th ranked team in the country. Luke Nixon laying down the bunt. Testing Gongor. Got it with his glove, and the flip is not in time. Got to try something different when he's striking out everybody. And Luke Nixon, the speedy freshman, is on to start the inning. I love this from NC State. Got a pitcher that's cruising along. Strikeout after strikeout after strikeout. Hits hard to come by. So what do you do? Put the ball on the ground and force him, that pitcher that's been mowing you down all day, to make a play. Get him off of his comfortable perch atop that mound. And maybe that's what starts a little comeback here for NC State. And that flips the lineup over. Third time through now. The pitching has settled down for the Wolfpack after giving up six through two. And perhaps momentum building at the plate. For pitchers, this is the separating factor when you get into conference games. When you face the lineup third, maybe fourth time through, can you continue to get out? And honestly, if you're NC State, can you force Gongor to work a little bit? That would be a, a step in the right direction because Gongor has been so efficient. Just 78 pitches here in the sixth inning. Work that pitch count up at the very least. Seems like they're on their way to doing that here. Different approach. Just the third hit of the game to start the inning on the bunt single from Nixon. Can't play that much small ball, down five in the sixth inning, but you can use it as a, a jump starter. And you can use it just to change the rhythm of the pitcher. This is driven out to center field, and Rose tracks under it. Everything's a little bit adventurous out there for Zion Rose, it looks like. Even on a more or less routine play like that one. Just a little moment where he had to find the ball. He played there a decent amount at IMG last year, his last year of high school. The catcher, his natural position. Pennington up, Nixon on first. Reminder that Pennington has the only run for NC State this game with his home run to right center. And that is nub towards first. Louisville will take the out. Ryan McCoy picks it up, no problem. It's not the strikeouts that Gongora has been punching up today, but a couple of good responses to get the softly hit line drive and then a weekly hit grounder over to first for a couple of outs to steady himself. Second run in scoring position now. But like you alluded to, Jeff, good bounce back for Gongora. They'll take the two outs they got there. Another dangerous home run threat, Makarevich. Oh 
sixth nationally in RBI per game. Just under two. That's 41 for the season. His RBI rate has slowed down over the last 14 games, but it's still kind of ridiculous. Waves to that inside pitch. 14 RBI his last 14. That's really good. But through his first 12, he had 27. That's otherworldly. Yeah. Not a good night tonight so far. Scoots away, and the throw down is smothered by Beard. Really important stop there by Beard. Rather than trying to hang around at third and see if he can make a play, he just turned into a fielder there and stopped the ball on that throw from Klein. It was offline and dangerously close to getting by him into the outfield. Important play. Hitters count. Big cut from Makarevich, and he fouled the fastball back. Three, two, two outs. Man on third. And it's ball four. That's the first walk for Gongora tonight. With those two outs that came in quick succession, you thought Louisville might have been out of the woods in this inning. Not quite. And now with two men on, NC State can really change the game with one swing. Mm -hmm. And Cozart can provide that big swing. Six homers. You talked about a Jack third time through the order. Could NC State get to Gongora? They've not quite gotten to him. But very close and a very dangerous batter at the plate with this opportunity. It's been a combination. His command not quite as sharp, but NC State's also been more patient. Yeah. Again, unusual for this team to have so many strikeouts. Strike out the fewest times per game in the league. One and two. Got the fastball by him. And the pace has slowed down a little bit as well. Gongora was really moving in the first four or five innings. But he's a pitch away from getting out of this. Check on first. Makarevich at first. It's Nixon at third after he started the inning with an infield bunt single. And this is a rope out to right, but right at Humphrey. Some of the first trouble that Gongor has faced tonight, but he worked. And pitches. Beard taking a hack on the first pitch. Already has a homer this game. His fifth of the year and his third in the last four games. And this is a slow roller down the line and foul. Jeff, this thing never really left about 10 to 12 feet. It was on a line. Yeah, just a uh, Hummer mid-air there on a line drive from Logan Beard. But looks good off the bat for a guy that has that kind of pop in his game despite being 
earlier in his career a middle infielder and now primarily a third baseman. It's not been about the power that he possesses. It's been about when he shows that power, and he's shown it of late. In a game right now that Louisville could need a little insurance run. They've gone a few innings now scoreless, three in a row. He did hold his swing, according to John Byrne. Yeah, it feels like NC State is still very much in this game, especially with the way that they've been able to come back and win tight games. Struck out swinging. Nice start for Derek Smith. A curveball for Smith looking mighty nice there. Just the two pitches for him with the fastball and the curveball. And he mixes them very well, uses them nearly equally. It's a tight curveball. It almost looks like a slider, a little bit more vertical. And he starts it low to Benson, who's been hit a couple of times tonight. The average for Benson has continued to dip after a blazing hot start. Nine for his last 40 entering the game. Two and two. how some of the fans see it and Benson sends it that way. Good catch. Trying to scuff it up. Another foul ball. That one's not catchable. He's very interested in that scuff mark. Sure is. Interested in the baseball generally. Three, two. I would be two. Have you ever caught a foul ball? I have not. Well, not, a, not as a fan. That's foul. Never. Not you, one time. You either? No, not not for me. Never. Mm -mm. Never been the lucky one to have a foul ball hit toward me. Caught a softball. Ooh, foul tip is caught. And two strikeouts to start for Smith. Momentum clearly on the side of NC State right now, but the question how much? They've not been able to swing runs to their side of the board just yet in big numbers. But the pitching has been really strong over the last three and now into this fourth consecutive inning. And Smith has been strong out of the bullpen with that slurvy curveball, as you pointed out, Jack. Mixed with the fastball well. The focus and intensity still there for Elliott Avent. 28th year as the head coach for NC State. Hard grounder to short and smooth like butter to end the inning. One, two, three. We go to this. In the final four at the bottom of that graphic, the Wolfpack down just one against South Carolina at halftime. Talk about a magical run. That would be some serious March magic to upset South Carolina in that national semifinal. 
Who do you have in the final four on the women's side? In the title game, you mean? Yeah. Probably Carolina and Iowa, I would say. It, it, those it's are hard, the two favorites. Right? Hard, hard to bet against those two, even with UConn and Beckers playing well. Yeah, that's the nightcap. Caitlin Clark and, and Paige Beckers. Bunt laid down, and the throw just in time. Well done from Klein as Hogue tried to sneak one out. NC State just trying to do what they can to get the offense going. We saw them with a bunt single last inning to get things started. Hogue trying to pull one off here as well, and just a little bit short. It's the little plays like that that Louisville's going to have to make to hold on here. And Gongora starts Serrano with the strike. He's approaching the 100 pitch mark pretty quickly. And the bullpen is warming. So this might be it for Gongora. Velo also a touchdown at 89. And it's Caden Campbell getting loose. But back to that quick pace for Gongora again with no runners on. Last half inning had a couple of runners on, slowed down. But the pace back up, he's moving quickly. Maybe something that he talked to Roger Williams about during the, uh, the half inning. Another lefty in Campbell normally comes in in High leverage, men on base, tough situations. This is popped up right side. Hoy going back from second, and Humphrey's going to call him off. Two outs in quick fashion for Gongora. The only question is, Jeff, if he gets a, a one or two pitch out here, would you consider the eighth? I might, but my suspicion is that Dan McDonald and Roger Williams do not. I think you tip your cap to Gongora, say, thanks for the good shift. And hand it off to the bullpen, hand it off to Caden Campbell, see if they can finish off what looks like a series opening win for Louisville. Keeps Gongora confident, a gem today. Campbell can start fresh, and Gongora would have to face this NC State lineup for a fourth time. Yeah. So hoping to end it here on a high note, NC State just three hits so far, and their only run off the solo homer from Pennington in the fourth. As Gongora's reached 100 pitches. One and two. Gongora also searching for strikeout number 11. After he had 10 through 5. Swing and a miss. 11 Ks. And some swag for Gongora. That Louisville bullpen to see if they can finish it off. And what an outing it was if that was the end for Sebastian Gongora. On the heels of back-to-back -back disappointing outings against Wake Forest and Florida State, he turned in his best as a Louisville Cardinal today. His games against Virginia Tech and here today. It's exactly why Louisville brought him in. Now it's up to his team to finish it out. You saw Rose three for three. And now two and one against Smith, who had a couple of strikeouts in a one, two, three inning in the sixth. And you talked about Jack, not a lot of hits to go by in this game with just the nine combined. Ton of credit deserved to the NC State bullpen keeping Louisville off the board in four straight innings. 
And even if the result doesn't go their way today, Jeff, it saves some arms for the rest of the weekend. Yes, indeed. After the perfect start for Louisville, it's been a little bit more stomachable for NC State over the last few innings. When you keep in mind that there's a Saturday and Sunday game to come. Yeah, a reminder for those just joining us, Logan Whitaker expected to start, but under the weather. So it turned into a bullpen day with Heath Andrews getting the start. Rose flies it out to left center. And Serrano ending Rose's perfect day at the plate. Do you like the move from him in the leadoff spot to the three spot? I don't mind it for him because he's proven that he's going to swing a hot bat no matter where he is in the lineup. What I do like is getting Benson at the top. You mentioned his struggles at the plate, but he's still got it. A really strong on base percentage as a table setter. He's gotten on base a few times today. Opportunity to put Hoy in there as well, a guy that is going to get on base and get things started in the two hole. I certainly don't mind it. I'll, I'll say that. And I think it fits Zion Rose's build and his assets as a player a little bit more naturally to be a three hole hitter than a leadoff guy. Keelan just smokes that into right. 106 off the bat for the hot-hitting Gavin Keelan. Yeah, that was a laser off the bat. And Nixon had to hear that ball fizz by him. And it didn't miss him by much out there in the field at second base for NC State. Gavin Keelan just swinging the bat hard. And when you do that, and make contact, you're going to hit the ball hard. Eddie King takes inside. And while that wasn't an extra base hit for Gavin, the number of extra base hits has ramped up significantly this year. 21 of them already. He had 10 total last year. A ton of hard hit balls. And also five home runs, the first of his career. And that happened in a 10-day span in mid-March. Just barely safe. A couple of close calls on back-to-back -back pickoff moves there by Smith. But yeah, Gavin Keelan feels like a different hitter this year for Louisville. Feels like a new hitter for Louisville. Talk about some shuffling. You mentioned it. Rose dropping down to third. Keelan in that cleanup spot for just the third time this year. And who knows, maybe Eddie King, a fixture in the middle of the lineup as well. Two more hits today. And that batting average continuing to rise, now up to 340. Two and one. Oh, no. He went around. It's one and two. Let's see. Pretty close. That one to the backstop. And Keelan will hit the brakes at second. In scoring position for King now. Even with the prowess of Cozart, an elite catching prospect behind the plate, that was nearly impossible to stop. They are concerned about Keelan on the bases. Just one stolen base this year. King's two RBI single in the first was a big one. And he strikes out swinging for the second time this game. Smith has shown really good stuff. Yes, he has, and that was and excuse me, swing from Eddie King here on this breaking ball toward the outside part of the plate from King's point of view. Matt 
Klein is not. He's dialed in. Chance to extend the lead here for Louisville with the base hit. Held his swing. Climb with a walk, a hit by pitch, and flew out to right on a fairly well hit ball his last time up. And there's the first strike for Labriola. Again, this is an NC State team that has not been tested on the road much this year. Just their seventh road game. They've played two series. The most recent against Georgia Tech, they got swept. And the first was in Hawaii. And they went two and one. Not saying the series against the Islanders is an easy one, but I don't think anyone minds going to Hawaii in February. Or in early April, for that matter. It's 77 degrees out there right now. Thank you, Jeff. As Klein drives it to left field, back towards the track, and it's all the way to the wall. The outfield was playing in, and that's going to allow Gavin Keelan to come home. RBI double for Klein and some insurance for Louisville. It's insurance that's felt like a long time coming. Matt Klein, remember, ran himself into an out earlier because he wanted to be aggressive on the base pads. It's an out you'll live with if you're Louisville, and you'll live with it a little bit easier now that Klein has driven that one into left center field to the fence to score that runner at second, Gavin Keelan. Louisville was working their way to a comfortable lead. They've got one now with this six-run cushion. It'll take quite the comeback by NC State with a couple innings to go. Not that NC State isn't capable of that. And perhaps getting into the bullpen for Louisville might give them some life, but a big hole to climb out of, especially on the road. Ooh, a strike. Grimace from Humphrey in reaction. Looking for her, his first hit. Louisville now has eight as a team. NC State just three. Humphrey to shortstop. Backhand play for Butterworth. Popping to his feet. It's not in time. Butterworth had that as smooth as he possibly could, but... It was hit a little bit too deep into the hole. Tried his best to make that throw. You talked about it being smooth, Jack. Absolutely on the stop for Butterworth. Moving to his right, sliding into the outfield grass. Turned on a dime really quickly and then just tried with all of his might to get that throw across and just did not have enough muscle behind it to challenge Humphrey, who's a terrific athlete out of that left-hand hitting box. Yeah, the West Carolina transfer couldn't come up with it. Humphrey's first hit. Six-game hit streak now for Humphrey. And Elliott Avent is not messing around. Understands that this game could get away quickly. Now to talk with Labriola and give his bullpen more time to warm up. Jacob Halford. With two out, I think Avon is taking his chances here with Labriola that he can just get this out and advance the game one inning further before he goes deeper into the bullpen. Not that you're punting on this game if you're NC State, but you certainly are playing with an eye on tomorrow and Sunday. And again, given the situation with the illness and the shuffling in the starting rotation on the weekend for NC State this weekend, They'd really prefer if Labriola could get this out. And it's Michael Lippi at the plate. Pinch hitting 
for Ryan McCoy. So we'll see what the defensive alignment looks like for Louisville with Lippy and outfielder pinch hitting for the first baseman McCoy. He holds, it's 2-0. and oh. Up and down season so far for Lippy, but the highs have been really high. And when he hits it, he hits it extremely hard. Frequently above 100 miles an hour off the bat. Takes another breaking ball, which has been a bit of an issue for him. An impressive approach right here for the freshman. Yeah, when Lippy has made contact, it's been hard contact, but it's most often been on fastballs, as you point out. Got one there, but on the edge. Redshirt freshman, I should say. Feels like a big hit could really give Louisville the nail in the coffin. Klein and Humphrey on. And it's strike two. That's what Louis hoping for. Hoping the offense eats a little bit more. Humphrey running and Lippy fouls it off. Three, two, Humphrey going, and it's to the backstop. This will bring home Klein. Couple of insurance runs here in the seventh. 8-1 Louisville. Need to find his feet once again in this game, and he's being asked to get out of a jam here against the Louisville team trying to break it open. Pinch hitter here for Louisville, Ali Seya for Beard, who homered earlier this game. And it's one and one. One glances off the glove, but back up from Nixon over at second. Now one and two. While he say has been hard to strike out this year, but as we touched on, Jeff really filled in nicely for Hoy while he was injured. And that stretch when he was starting, the best he looked all season. Got ball foul. Yeah, that's certainly true. And it's enough to make Louisville fans optimistic for the future of the middle infield that Ali Saya is more than capable of being a quality second baseman. We've seen him at short a little bit as well this year. will have to continue to grow and mature at the plate. Big opportunity for him here. Didn't get away far enough for the runners to advance. And it's Humphrey and Lippy. So with Lippy and Alisea batting, again, interesting to see what the defense is going to look like for Louisville in the top of the eighth. Three and two. And it's the top of the order. Benson on deck. Runner.
Spears going. Ali Say is swinging, and it's up the middle. Perfect timing. That scores one. First and third, two outs, and Louisville is up by eight. Freshman comes through. The future of that Louisville middle infield looks good indeed with Alex Ali Say. Not a guy that will be tasked with driving in runs on many occasions over his career compared to some other guys. But when he's been asked to do it this year, he's come through a bunch. Not because he's a big contact guy, driving the ball with power, but able to make lots of contact for base hits and singles like he did just there. And keep in mind here, run rule in effect in ACC games. If Louisville scores two here, game's over. It's 10 after 7. Benson could do it with an extra base hit against Halford. Benson still looking for his first hit of the day. Struck out swinging in the sixth. And just inside. Louisville up to 10 hits now. Also trying to reach double figures for the first time in an ACC game. As far as run total goes. Count two and two. Lippy and Ali Saya on for Benson. Just out. Ball four. And Louisville will bring its ninth batter to the plate this inning. Dylan Hoy with the bases loaded, two gone. Might not be the spectacular day at the plate that JT Benson is capable of in the day that he feels like he needs to kind of get off this schneid, but it's been a very productive day for him getting on base. Dylan Hoy can end this with a single. Nice stop by Kozart. Yeah, Benson's reached three times. Hoy's reached twice with two walks. And Halford struggling with his command. Ball for the bullpen. Draws a jeer from the faithful that remain out here in the cold. They're looking for anything to boo. Wouldn't you? Are you not a big booer? Can be fun on occasion. Hoy to center field. Serrano going back, and it's over his head. That's going to do it. Dylan Hoy clears the bases, and that's the ball game. A series opening win for Louisville in seven. What a moment for Hoy. What a game for Louisville, a game that they really, truly needed.